Five Nights at Freddy's is well known for breaking the way horror games were made. While most horror games are free roam and allow you to move around and run away from the danger, Five Nights at Freddy's changed this by planting the player in one spot, unable to move with the threats coming to them. This style of gameplay is in my opinion one of the main reasons that this game became as successful as it has. I mean, Five Nights at Freddy's is called a genre for a reason. However, despite this unique style of gameplay, the idea of making it free roam like every other horror game has been out for a while. So in this video, I'm going to go through the history of FNAF free roam games and explain my thoughts on what this style of gameplay has done to the Final Fantasy Freddy series. The first instance of Final Fantasy Freddy's free roam that I could find was the Gmod map, which honestly doesn't surprise me. With YouTubers such as Markiplier and Jacksepticeye making videos of them playing on the map, it's no wonder that the idea of a Final Fantasy Freddy's free roam game became an ever popular thought. At the time, however, it wasn't nearly as popular to see a free roam Final Fantasy Freddy's fan game for a couple of reasons. One, making a Final Fantasy fan game was something that a lot of people just weren't doing at the time. And two, if they were, it was basically just recreating the first game. Think Five Nights at Candies, Five Nights at Wario's, One Night at Flumpties, etc. In fact, the first semi-free roam Final Fantasy Freddy's game that I could find is actually Five Nights at Freddy's 4. Well, Five Nights at Freddy's 4 is definitely not a free roam game by any means. It was the first game that required you to actually move towards the danger and having to approach the doors. However, despite this, this game was still very block based in anything that happened on intervals and the running animation could easily be replaced with just spinning in a circle and staring into the black of the doors. Around this time, what I believe to be the first truly free roam Final Fantasy Freddy's fan game would be released, The Joy of Creation. The first version of The Joy of Creation, well technically second in The Joy of Creation Reborn, features four levels where you have to traverse some sort of location and find a certain number of objects before either the animatronic finds you or you run out of time. This was the first pure free roam Final Fantasy Freddy's game that I could find that wasn't just a recreation of the location in Gmod on Minecraft. It was a completely unique experience, separate from the official Final Fantasy Freddy's game. Having to roam the halls while a cracked up version of Freddy chases you down added a whole other element of fear to these games. It's no wonder that the Drive Creation games are considered some of the scariest. Now, while Reborn was the first, Story Mode is the most popular and it too contains some free roam levels as well. This game isn't 100% free roam, with the bedroom and attic being outliers, but even still the idea of being able to move around freely was ever present. The living room and the office trapped you in a room and made you have to get up and complete tasks, while the basement gave you a full free roam experience, making you complete a series of levels while avoiding animatronic threats. Now while free roam games were still not really that explored, a full free roam Final Fantasy Freddy's game was in the works. Security Breach was released, with minor problems, but this was a real first time experience Final Fantasy Freddy's at such a large scale, being able to move around a super large environment and explore while being chased by animatronics. And the Ruined DLC would be released a bit later, and acted kind of more like a traditional horror game, with a very linear path forcing you towards the danger. However, as anyone would know, these two games don't exactly have the best reputation. They have none of the original aspects that made the Final Fantasy Freddy's game so appealing in the first place, the games are broken, and the danger was teleporting robots with lacking jump scares and not very interesting ideas, except for one, the endo section and possibly the daycare, but they too had things about them that made them not as good. The endo section could be easily cheesed through, and Moon was just broken. The official Final Fantasy Freddy's game's first shot at free roam had failed tremendously, and honestly got people craving for an actually good Final Fantasy Freddy's free roam game. Around this time, the draw of creation would still remain the peak in terms of free roam, and over the next couple of years, what I would like to call the free roam spam began to take a hold. The amount of free roam Final Fantasy Freddy's fan games became ever present, with games like Creepy Nights at Freddy's literally just remaking Final Fantasy Freddy's 1 in free roam. The Final Fantasy Freddy's 1 free roam was ever present everywhere, and it honestly still is. Final Fantasy Freddy's 3 got a couple of remakes too, with the games basically just being don't die to the animatronics with all the same tools used. There was a couple of outliers. Next free roam comes point and click. Not point and click like the OG Fights of Freddy's, but in the sense where if you click somewhere, your character will actually move to that location. The most infamous and best example of these type of games in my mind being A Shadow Over Freddy's, which forced you to think about every decision you make because making the wrong decision would kill you. However, if we're talking about free roam just straight up, I think the best one would be Fazbear Nights, which also is the most recent game out of all of them, releasing in 2023. There's two versions of this game from the first and second games. The second game is really good and has some really cool new areas to explore, but it's just run away and don't let the animatronics see you. The first game, however, while again just being don't let the animatronics see you, 
really ups from what Freeram is capable of. The layout of the restaurant is in such a way that it feels more realistic and is easily the scariest Freeram game out of all of them. The way the nights are structured with the office and balancing certain mechanics, nights 1 and 2, Bonnie and Chica will roam and chase you but you can lock them out of your office, however nights 3 and 4 introduce Freddy and Foxy. His mechanics force you to leave the office and leave yourself exposed to Bonnie and Chica. This in my mind combines the best of both worlds. While you have your office gameplay that Panther Pizza is known for, you also have your free roam, and while it's not perfect, this game has surely done the best version of a free roam Panther Freddy's game that we have seen so far. Tons of variations of free roam Panther Freddy's games have released, and most of them are pretty simple games for the most part. Overall, despite everyone's best effort, the gameplay that made Panther Freddy so unique would still be far superior to any free roam style game. And while Game Jolt is flooded with hundreds of free roam Panther Freddy's games, none of them could live up to the classics, and that Honestly, is the entire history of Free Roam Panzer Freddy's games.